Ladies and gentlemen, just before we get into the meat of today's video, which should be a doozy, I just wanted to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This will more than likely be the final video of the year on my channel. I just want to say thank you. I know it's been a rough month since the World Cup came to an end and, you know, I won't lie, I'll be the first one to admit I've been a bit lazy, but... I did just want to say thank you. It was definitely the most successful year, especially the back half of the year that I've ever had here on the YouTube. So I just want to say thank you. 2023, it'll be interesting to one because I've got time because uni's over. But maybe I've also got to start my real life stuff. So let's not think about it. Let's enjoy Christmas. Let's enjoy the holidays because look, I needed to come back with a doozy, and I know I've gotten a lot of requests asking me about the news around Latrell Mitchell and Dylan Brown, and we'll get to that probably in the next video, but this is the last one for 2022, and you guys have waited patiently, so we do predictions, we do reviews, but it's time to do the ultimate put the hog on the line test, because today I'm giving you my top 10 greatest NRL players of all time. That is right, a top 10 greatest footy players. Now, I was born in 2001, started watching in 2011, then when we got Fox Souls 2016 is when I've become the hardcore fan that you all know and love today. So, anyone before, especially around 2006, it's gonna be hard for me. And, key word here, NRL. So, 1998, to now, so no Bob Fulton, no Dally Messenger, none of the old bloke. Let's get straight into the video, guys. My top 10 greatest NRL players of all time. If you do enjoy the video, smash that like button. Smash it like George DeFua, smash Cameron Munster. It's the final time you'll have to smash a like button on the Paddy G YouTube channel in 2022. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because it would be the greatest gift for me going into 2023. And Santa, he'd want you to subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Do you agree with my top 10? Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think I even watch rugby league? Spoiler alert, I actually do. Let me know, am I an idiot or am I a genius in that comment section below? And drop your top 10. Who do you think's the GOAT? Let me know. But let's get straight into the video and put my entire credibility on the line. Now there's a ton of players to go through and only doing a top 10, so let's get a few honorable mentions out of the way and we'll start with one that I'll probably get hate for for not putting him in the top 10 is Freddie Fittler. Didn't see much of Freddie growing up and I think he did a lot of his best work before 1998, before the NRL era, so that's why he is not in the top 10. Just didn't see him. Last guys play in the top 10. The other honorable mention, I've gone Nathan Cleary. I know everyone's hating me already, but there is a fact. Nathan Cleary is the best 25-year-old we have ever seen in the NRL. He is miles ahead of even number one on this list at that same age. So there's no doubt that I think that Nathan Cleary would be top 10. In fact, I know I might get, hate, get a lot of hate for this, but considering what he's already done, he might as well be number 11. And the final honorable mention, if you didn't hate me enough already, Tom Trevojevic in a one-off game of Rugby League to save the universe. The Monstars are coming. Tom Trevojevic in a single game is the best Rugby League footballer of all time. He just, he can't stay fit and it's hard to put someone in here who hasn't won a premiership. So Tommy Turbo, he's the final honorable mention. And let's get straight into the top 10. Coming in at 10th place, he's the only forward on this list, but he may be the greatest forward of all time. Jason Taumalolo, the 2015 Premiership winner, the last forward to win outside of a dummy half, to win the Dalian medal, and probably the only forward to ever take out the top prize in a long time. Taumalolo changed the game, and he has changed the game along with it after a Tough couple of years, I think it's fair to say, since that 2017 grand final loss. Tamalo had a career year. He suffers from what a lot of these players are going to suffer from on this list. When he has a quiet game, and by quiet game, I mean a top tier game for everyone else's standards, he gets ridiculed. But Jason Tamalo is back to his best, and it looks like he is going to be a key member of this new Cowboys era. If he wins another premiership, he could go higher on this list. 
for damaging forward we've ever seen. I mean, if the likes of Jake Trevojevic is struggling to take you down, you know you're a beast. Sam Burgess, he's probably the next one. I know Burgess didn't have as long as a career as even Tal Malolo, but he made such an impact. But Tal Malolo, he has completely changed the game, was a key to the 2015 Premiership, and he has changed the international game. It was him choosing Tonga over New Zealand, which has flipped the international rugby league landscape. A key figure for not just the NRL, but for rugby league in general. And he is able to inch past into number 10. Number nine is a born winner. And it was tough for New South Welshman during the NRL era. But James Maloney was able to stand up and prove himself above the rest. Mitchell Pearce, Todd Carney, Jamie Soward, none of them could do what Jimmy Maloney did. And no player ever was able to lead the Cronulla Sharks to a premiership. And that is still the case. He was also, while we all talk about Sonny Bill joining the Roosters in 2013, it was James Maloney. He was also a key, key addition to that 2013 roster, allowing the Roosters to win that premiership. He also made the 2011 grand final with the Warriors. So while Maloney may be the most penalized and have the most missed tackles of any player in the NRL era, he is a born winner. Outside of his final year at Penrith, which was a transitioning year, I don't think he ever had a bad season. He won everything. He won Origins. He won World Cups. He won two NRL premierships. And he gets number nine on this list. In number eight now, and it is another current player, James Tedesco. It was only a few months ago that I said he has all the potential in the world to overtake Slater. Two premierships, a Dally M medal, an origin winning try, an origin winning fullback for New South Wales, which in this modern era, they're hard to come by, even though that shouldn't be the case. But in an era where we have Tom Travoyevich's, we have Latrell Mitchell's, we have Ryan Papenau's, and Tedesco just seems to be getting better and better. And it's so underrated, but what 21 with that decimated Roosters side who used more than their top 30 NRL squad was absolutely incredible. He's the Blues captain for a reason. He's the Australian captain for a reason. And I'll be damned if James Tedesco isn't higher on this list when he's all said and done. Let me know in that comment section down below. Do you think he can beat Slater? Number seven is another player who was a gun fullback, but would arguably the be the best outside back of all time. And he won a Clive Churchill medal in the halves, but Greg Inglis, we have never seen a player like him until we saw the guys like Latrell Mitchell and Tom Trevojevic pave the way. Inglis, Slater became the ball playing fullback. Everyone tried to copy with the likes of Brett Stewart and Jared Hayne. And Greg Inglis just decided he was going to run over every player on the planet. The key man to the Rabbitohs' first premiership in over 50 years. A tremendous talent. Look, he played for Queensland, and that's definitely going to help him. Was stripped to two premierships. He was still an incredible talent. Like I said, the best outside his fullback of all time. The fullback position in the NRL era is probably the most hotly contested. And yet, Billy Slater is still the undisputed king of the fullbacks. Look, it's hard not to talk about Origin with most of the players on this list. Was part of nearly every single series. And a two-time premiership winner, and he came back from so much. We all thought he was done, and he kept coming back. If he won that 2018 grand final, he may be higher on this list. The same with the two salary cap ones, but Billy Slater, an incredible player. The undisputed king of the fullbacks, Tedesco. Can he beat Slater by the end of the career? That's up for you guys in that comment section, and... Maybe Tedesco just needs a few more Origin Series and another Premiership to pip him. But for now, Billy Slater is still the GOAT fullback. Entering the top five now, and this guy could honestly... He's the swinger. He could be anywhere on this list, but Cooper Cronk, he makes it inside the top five for me. He won three Premierships in a row in the back end of his career. Yes, it's the two most dominant NRL teams of all time, but still, it was the Origin Series, but he was out with a broken arm that they lost. An incredible player, Craig Bellamy prodigy, but 
Look, you could say it was at the Roosters. He was still able to do it at the top level outside of that Melbourne Storm system. An incredible play. So underrated. Could be higher. He could be in the top three. And I know a lot of people who wouldn't even have him in the top ten. But you can't discount what Cooper Cronk has done. And that 2014 Origin Series, while Queensland fans don't want to remember it, God, he was maybe... The reason that Queensland Dynasty came to an end probably sooner than it should have. Number four now, and another player who people would have number one. He was the only player ever to win a golden boot in two positions. Darren Lockyer, the greatest Brisbane Bronco of all time. An absolute freak. Did it in the number one. And then when he got older, he's done it in the number six. He is undisputedly the best player to have ever done it. So many have tried. We've seen Munster become a revelation after a few difficult years at the start. Kalen Ponga, we saw him try and fail, and it looks like the Newcastle Knights may be trying it again. But the only player to win a golden boot in two different positions. The only thing holding Lockyer back is maybe a Dally M. You know, if you put him at number one, I would have an argument. But if you put him at number two... Well, look, I nearly put him at number two because that's how hotly contested this is. But Darren Lockyer is number four on my top 10 greatest ever. Entering the top three now, and I know a lot of people with this have this guy at number one. He's already an, an immortal. But Joey Johns, he just misses out for me because that 1997 premiership came outside of the NRL era. He still had that incredible 2001 season and he is the most influential player of all time. That 2005 State of Origin Game 2 when he came back might be the greatest individual performance we've ever seen from an NRL player. And you know what? If you want to have him at number one, I fully respect that and I know a lot of New South Welshmen do. I don't because unfortunately I didn't get to see Joey at his peak. He retired in 2007, but from what I've seen and the fact he is already an immortal, I couldn't leave him off this list. And anything below third would be disrespectful. Third might be a tad disrespectful, but my top two is hectic, baby. Shout out to Joey, the greatest New South Welshman in rugby league history. Now, the top two. And whoever I don't say, it might give it away. And you know what? This bloke, stats, it doesn't tell the story. He does things that no one else could have. He is in the argument for the clutchest player of all time. Kicking field goals, kicking conversions to win origins, kicking everything. He was the greatest kicker, in my opinion, of all time. A key member of the Queensland dynasty. His club record wasn't too fantastic. That's maybe that keeps him out of number one. But like I said, this is my video. This is my opinion. The only thing holding him back is he... I know he won the premiership with the Bulldogs. But the fact he only won one premiership, it's a real darn shame. But an incredible player. The greatest indigenous player of the NRL era. An incredible athlete. An incredible player. We all want to Thurston's headgear. He's number two on the greatest day of all time, but he's not number one because number one, and honestly guys, I know this might be a hot take, but when I went to do this video, this was the only spot I had zero doubt in my mind. Cameron Smith is the greatest, not NRL player of all time, I call him the GOAT, Nelly the GOAT of Australian sports. He was stripped of two premierships outside of that. He won in 2012, he won in 2017, he won in 2020. He rarely, rarely exited before a prelim final. The most capped Australian and Maroons player of all time. He won so many origins. He was probably the most important and the best player during that Queensland dynasty. He is, without a doubt, the GOAT. He doesn't have the highlights of Inglis. He doesn't have the same character as Jimmy Maloney. But when you look at Cameron Smith's highlights, it's him lifting trophies. And that's what sport is about. It's about winning. I called Maloney a winner. No one has won more than Cameron Smith. And he didn't do it in the 50s when the Dragons won 11 in a row. He did it when the NRL was a professional sport. 18 years at the top. He retired when he was still the best player in the game. I still wish he went to the Gold Coast Titans because I do think he has enough 
in him to take them to the top four back in that 2021 season. Of all the slots on this list, he was the easiest for me. Cameron Smith, the GOAT. Let me know in that comment section if you agree with my top 10 or not. Who do you think is the GOAT? George DeFool, that like button, guys. 2023 is around the corner, so get your final like in for 2022 and subscribe to the channel as well. Give me a Chrissy present, baby. Just do it. Just give me a Chrissy present because you guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Look, I might get roasted to death, but I hope at least a few of you agree with me. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for the support. Have a very good Christmas. You're seeing this on maybe Boxing Day, maybe the day after, because the NRL are copywriting me out of my poor little backside. So enjoy it. Have a good New Year, guys, and I'll see you all in 2023.